Guys, I tried. I'm sorry. I know I suck. I still haven't beaten the game, but these videos take a while to make. So this is where I am as of the day before I upload this video. So yeah, it's gonna to be a pretty thorough review. Uh, so in the meantime, while I work on the Mankind Divided review, let's talk about QuakeCon. And you might say, wow, Sean, uh, that was like one month ago and you're talking about it now? And the answer is yes. So yeah, I went to QuakeCon this year in Dallas, Texas, and my intention wasn't really to see the big stage show where they revealed some stuff, or the panels, or the tournament, or even the bring your own computer event. I was there to play games that I hadn't heard of before on the show floor. I played about six games, eight games if you count the two Bethesda VR experiences at this event. These games range from AAA games to a game claiming to be made by a guy in his attic. So this is going to come off as a review of eight-ish games more than a travel log type of thing. So the first game that I encountered was set the bar really high for me. It's this game called Dusk, which is a first-person shooter inspired by the likes of, of id software shooters quake and doom i got to play with the one man dev team while waiting for the person in front of me to finish the demo he said the story was about a secret government experiment that was going on a long time ago and this cthulhu type stuff they found uh, he told me exactly what it was but this is coming to me a month after i'm trying to remember and i can't really find where he talks about it because this is a really small game a black mesa style event occurred and these test facilities in the middle of nowhere are abandoned. Jump forward to the present day where there are treasure hunters who are trying to salvage some of these great, some of the great loot from the depths of these labs. I think if I remember correctly that you get to play as one of these treasure hunters. A lot of these levels do have this eeriness to them. The demo that he showed off was a survival wave mode and it was really fun. So much fun that even the Rolling Stones listed it as one of the four things that they loved about QuakeCon, uh, which makes this game really hard to point to people just by giving them a name. Google the search term Dusk game and a different game pops up. Nope, no, that's not it. It's not the same game. To actually find his, find his blog website, I had to Google the developer's name, go to his itch.io profile, then to his blog site. The people publishing the game don't even have the game on their website. So you're interested in playing this fantastic game, I would recommend that you follow him on Twitter. You might bump into it on Steam or GOG when it comes out, but uh, what are the chances of that? With all, with all the games that flood these stores, but then again, quality does float to the top, and this game is pretty great. Also, he reveals on Twitter that there are Deus Ex inspirations to some of the level design, and uh, well, <laughs> well, I'm interested, of course. So after stumbling around for a bit, I found myself at the Elder Scrolls Legends booth. Well, it's a deck building game, not to diss deck building games anyways, but the reason why I stopped playing Hearthstone was because I didn't have time and I was running out of veins to stick needles into. But it was pretty cool because uh, they gave me uh, some of the replica cards and they were really pretty. Uh, after that, I got to try out the Shadow Warrior 2. A game that I was meh about when it was announced. Uh, Shadow Warrior 1 was a good game that I really couldn't get into for some reason. But Shadow Warrior 2 is a sandboxy game that I can't... I 
I really can't get into also. Let me explain. The demo starts off as your character from the first game, Lo Wang, a monk tasks him with a fetch quest, which you run off to do. You've got a lot of these guns and magic and sword fighting techniques to fight demons, but this to me felt like a lot of like Far Cry running around aimlessly trying to grab stuff to take back to the hub where you could purchase gun ammo and armor and other stuff. I didn't really like it. The gameplay is still that fast paced gunplay with Far Cry elements sticked into it, which I really didn't feel like right to me, but it, you know, it looks fine, but it looks like they're designing a game around the new co-op feature, so I'm worried it's going to be a smaller version of Destiny or The Division, but it'll probably be fun to play with other people, so yeah. I also played another game being published by Devolver Digital called Strafe. It's a game inspired by the likes of Doom and Quake. It also is a procedurally generated roguelike, so if you're interested in that, it exists. It's something that is for someone, but not really for me. I, I might play it when it comes out, I don't know. I do have to say that sometimes this pixelized pixelated style goes too far and you're just staring at an item and you're wondering what it is. Also the dev noticed that uh, I found a bug that he hadn't even noticed before. The music wasn't playing for some reason but I one thing also that rubbed me the wrong way with this game is that they're promoting the use of the misuse of the word literally and I cannot stand for that. No no you, I literally did not die playing this game. No nobody died. Uh, okay whatever. Uh, okay. I then played a game called Steam Knight, which is a well-designed platformer, kind of like Super Meat Boy, and I also like the art style of the main character, what they're going for. I got to talk to the team that was making it, and apparently they're a bunch of former Full Sail University students, so that's cool. They just got a school and they wanted to put out a game it looks really well designed and i i'm interested in seeing it when it comes out it's i, I like the art style i like the gameplay it's really difficult but uh it's really approachable it, i like it there's another game that i played that was in a very early build called tesser active it's a puzzle game where you pretty much flip stuff over axes and so yeah, it was alright. It's way too early. Uh, needs a lot more polish. Finally, I waited over a half an hour, hour and a half in line so I could play both of the Bethesda VR experiences that were English and off. And my quick impressions were eh. I mean, VR is a new tool, and just putting games uh, in VR opens up new opportunities for gameplay. And I know I've been very negative on of. VR in the past from a business perspective and well the thing is that VR doesn't really demo very well. Wait let me clarify it doesn't demo well for an unorganized affair. See after waiting an hour and a half to get to just get to try the VR experience I asked the gentleman who was guiding the experience if I could leave my glasses on and he said sure. So I put them on very awkwardly so much that my glasses fell to the ground. It didn't really fit on my face, but after much finagling, I finally had the headset secured to my face. I noticed that one thing that I really hadn't heard from from other people. It was heavy, pretty heavy. Heavier than I expected it, and very awkward to put on. The HTC Vive apparently weighs 1.2 pounds without the cable, and with the cables, it's a really bulky headset. Well, I felt like I was going to tip over. But the actual experience was interesting. First, I played the Fallout 4 experience, which started you off in front of the Red Rocket gas station, and you're standing in front of dog meat, which I thought was kind of really mean on the developers because I was standing there trying to figure out the controls and well I may have may not have accidentally shot a dog. No, I, I mean it was, an, it was an accident I'm sorry. Guy who was running the demo said that he was going to guide me through the experience and well while I was examining the fur of a dog I, there was something going around around me I couldn't tell so I just continued to play the game. Uh, the, for some reason my gameplay didn't have any sound which I later found out was that the fact that the headphones weren't plugged in. Uh, so I was playing a game with no sounds and 
Didn't they just throw these mole rats at you and then zombies and then raiders and then death claws all in waves? It's nice to put a gun to your face and use iron sights in real life, kinda, but uh, when you have infinite ammo and infinite health and can teleport anywhere with your left hand, it kinda gets boring. You don't really need to use the mechanics or anything like cover or anything. So the most interesting thing you could do is pick up everything. And then I stood there waiting for someone to tell me something, but after a while I took off the headset and realized there was a different dude running the booth and that kind of weirded me out. Apparently they switched out the dude running the booth and the guy was just standing there, sitting there and I was waiting for someone to tell me that the demo was done. So the guy kind of felt bad that I didn't have sound and so I got to play Doom VR, which was kind of interesting. You fight waves and waves of demons and for the most part, that's it. It's hard to explain without having footage, but there was also a part where they tell you not to move for a minute and so you stand still in a dark room when the lights turn on and there's a revenant standing in front of you. You turn around and there's a pinky on the and then on the other side, there's like a hair, hell baron dude thing uh, next to each other and demo ends pretty much. So what did I think of the experience overall? I mean, VR is really complicated, so I find it really hard for people to set up. I don't think that I, I don't think I'd have been able to deal with all of the cables and just acting, attaching the headset to my face was really hard. Also, I believe that, believe it or not, analog controls are more fun for movement than that stupid teleport system. It just gets really boring. The demo also had pretty much zero gameplay as you had infinite ammo and infinite health, uh, so I wasn't really afraid to get in the faces of ghouls, death claws, and demons. So I had to extrapolate and try to think of like mechanics and how this would work out. But some of the subtle things about the experience make me optimistic mystic for VR. The fact that you could uh, manipulate items with your hands, uh, well, it makes it easy to move things around, which kind of makes me excited for a VR detective game. LA Noir had this problem where they put a lot of junk on the floor, but instead of letting you pick up everything, they would have your character behave like a metal detector, and put out his hand towards objects of interest. This is meant to reduce the frustration of a player picking up like the 10th paper ball, but then it causes a lack of immersion. If the motion picking up objects where one were one to one or if a player doesn't have to actually pick up an object to examine it well it makes it a lot better so in summary the experience i had was bad and blurry because it wasn't set up and wasn't customized to my eyes there are these sliders that you have to move or mess around it move through the lenses and well I didn't really get the chance to do that and mess around with it but I am willing to see in the future whether VR has anything for me in the future. In summary QuakeCon was pretty cool totally worth the price of free that I paid and I am willing to go again. I got to see some cool people walking around the show floor. Pete Hines popped out of a back room but he looks really busy. Anyways uh would totally go again next year to check out the games. I'm not really into other stuff Stuff, but hey, they're from for someone, you know, the, the bring your own computer and all that. But yeah, QuakeCon is pretty cool.